We've all heard about 3D printer enclosures and today we're going to learn how to build one, so stick around. Yo, how's it going you guys? MJV back with another video and today we're going to be learning how to make a 3D printer enclosure that not only works great, but is dirt cheap and has the looks to back it up. But before we continue, go ahead and subscribe if you want to keep updated on any of the future projects. We do have a lot of interesting content coming up this month as we approach the Halloween season and always be sure to go ahead and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Let's head right into it. Now if you're like me, the last thing you want to do is come back to a days long unmonitored print and find a mess of warps and cracks. Not only does this cost us valuable print time, but can also cost us a good amount of money, especially on the larger prints. Now more beginner friendly plastics such as PLA or PETG, an enclosure really isn't necessary, but when printing let's say ASA or ABS plastic, then you definitely want to use one of these. Essentially, an enclosure is an insulated box that keeps your prints protected from cold drafts while providing a constant temperature on the inside, thus ensuring the minimal warping and cracking of your prints. And with a budget of around $60, I was able to get this awesome enclosure. Now I understand this is a good amount of money, but if you do have an Ender 3 or smaller printers of that nature, you should be able to tackle a project like this with about half the cost. So let's get started. To begin, you're going to want to find out the length, width, and height of your printer using a tape measure. Notice that the y-axis moves beyond the base in both directions, so make sure to account for that. And on the width, we're going to want to measure from the x-axis, not the base of the printer. This will help account for the thickness of motors mounted on either side, if there are any. Also, make sure to add an extra 2 or 3 inches to your measurements. This way the printer isn't cramped when we put it inside the enclosure. Once we've taken all the measurements, let's head it over to the hardware store and buy the materials we're going to need. We're going to need an insulation board, preferably an inch thick, aluminum tape, a couple of hinges, L brackets, drywall screws, and at least a paint of acrylic. Depending on your budget, this is where you might find yourself spending anywhere from $30 to $60. It really just depends on the type and amount of materials you decide to So now that we have our materials ready, let's go ahead and start cutting our walls. Now some of you may notice that I opted for smaller insulation sheets rather than the larger ones. That's because unfortunately my vehicle didn't have the space to fit such a large board. But that's okay because essentially the smaller pieces are exactly the same as the big sheet. Just a little price here, so keep that in mind. First, let's start by measuring out the lengths and widths that we need. Marking them with a straight edge, then taking a razor and cutting out our pieces. And I did find out that some of our aluminum boards were too short, so I used my aluminum tape to get those to size. Given that I did want to add a window, I wasn't sure how I was going to achieve this, but then I got the idea to maybe carve out the foam and do some type of insert. We started by getting one of our acrylic pieces and placing it relative to where we wanted our window to be. Now after marking down our corners, we took the tape measure and essentially measured a square half an inch smaller than the measurement of our acrylic. Now this might be a bit confusing, but hear me out. You're going to want to cut the inner square from the front and the back side depending on the length of your blade and pop it out. So at this point, your window should be looking something like this. Now to give the acrylic a sturdier fit and more flush look, go ahead and carve out that border to the thickness of the acrylic. You don't really have to measure this, but make sure not to go in too deep. After it's all said and done, you should have a result looking something like this, and now's a good time to test fit the piece of plastic in the groove. If everything fits, let's take off the plastic protective cover from the acrylic pane and lay it in the groove. Using our aluminum tape, seal off the edges where the foam meets the plastic, this will hold our window in place and prevent heat from escaping our box. Fortunately, I didn't get any footage making the door guys, but you can essentially do the same process I used for the window to make the door, and then we'll be using our hinges to attach it to the body of the box. So now that we have all the walls made out, we can finally start to attend to the assembly. Using our brackets, make sure to connect the base to the walls and vice versa. We can also use drywall screws to connect the walls together for that extra support. Finally, let's close up these seams with our aluminum tape, just like we did for our window. That way none of our heat escapes. In order to provide airflow from our electronics to the outer part of our enclosure, I designed a duct that can be easily attached to the inner vent of my sidewinder. The last thing we want is to cause any unnecessary damage to our internal electronics. So if you do need some heat to escape, you can leave this vent open or plug it up with a sock or a cloth while the enclosure heats up. Lastly, our door hinges were also recessed like our foam window. So make sure to make the necessary adjustments and shave the areas as necessary. We can now attach our door to the box, and yes, I did cheat a little bit by using OBS board, but it's okay, my budget did allow me to splurge a little bit. And finally, here are the results.
So after a couple of days of use, I've had absolutely no issues with my prints. My ABS has yet to warp or yet to crack. I did notice my prints lifting off the bed a little bit, but after re-leveling and using a glue stick, it seemed like all my problems were gone. Final verdict is that this is a very cost-effective way of getting better prints without breaking the bank. And for those hobbyists out there that do plan to do larger prints and these tougher plastics, you most definitely want to have one of these to get the most out of your printer. So that's about it for this video guys. I hope it does help anybody out there who's looking to undertake a project like this. And if you all have any questions or would like to leave suggestions for future videos, be sure to do that in the comments below. And I look forward to our next video. I have something really special planned out that a lot of you guys have been waiting on. But until next time guys, this is MJV signing out.